Do you think it's gonna take long? No, he should be finished soon. Let's get the formalities out of the way so I can get back to some real work. I gotta see Captain Perry. Orders are orders. Gee, I hate internal politics bullshit. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course, we've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. No? Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlene. She'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. I saw Blake when I arrived. Maybe I should go talk to him. I'll have a look around the station. Stretch my legs for a bit. suggests the methodology of the origami killer. The investigation should confirm this in the coming days. The police are continuing to work around the clock to find the murderer as quickly as possible. I'll field some questions. Yes. You said the methodology indicated another victim for the origami killer. Can you be more specific?
Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, change the office. Killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. Prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Hmm. A common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater.
There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo-profiling any easier. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned, over 100 suspects interrogated, not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. Wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. That's all right. I know I can make it. I know. I know I can make it. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four fifteen. Yeah, that's it. Four fifteen. I remember exactly because I looked at the clock in the park. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. 
How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went to sit on a bench a little way off. I didn't notice right away the carousel had stopped. That must have been when Sean disappeared. You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? My wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the Oregon... Listen. Your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're going to keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say. But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to say. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I love. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa. I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you will please to move along, sir. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Pity he didn't want to talk. Might have known something. Goddamn asthma. 
I can't breathe when it rains. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man. You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now. You shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is mine. I ask you now to leave before it is too late. Christ, goddamn idiot! Open the register. Don't make me fucking kill you. Don't no, sir. Around. That I cannot do. Don't turn around. I waste you, man. I ain't joking. Fuck! Drop it now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice! Don't panic. Let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. Uh, my name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. You don't really want to shoot anybody, do you? I'm sure we can find a way out of this mess, right? Do you have anyone you care for in your life? A, a girlfriend, maybe? A family? Yeah. A little girl. I got a little girl. Her name is Jessica. What would Jessica think if she saw you here? Ask yourself, what would happen to her if things go wrong? You haven't done anything serious yet. If you put the gun away, we'll forget about what just happened, and that will be the end. Just walk away. Nothing serious. Shit, man! What the fuck do you think I'm doing here? Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. And now, give me the money. Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been well, here. This I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby, I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. 